Our union story is there to be seen We've won many victories and we've suffered defeats But as I turn through the pages and look back through time There's one single question stands out in my mind Today we may prosper, today we live free But if it weren't for the union, where would we be? It's our union, our union that defends our rights But our union's as strong as our will is to fight For the union is you and the union is me So stand up and stand by our union As time moved on, the Missos came to influence the union movement itself and the Australian Labor Party. Nothing shows that influence more clearly than the story of Bob Hawke and his challenge for the leadership of the ACTU at the 1969 Congress. I was a member of the Clarks Union, but at that time they didn't seem disposed to make me a delegate for reasons best known of themselves. And uh, I'd become a uh, commissioner for affidavits and with uh, what is appropriate when you're talking about a miscellaneous workers' union, it was that miscellaneous that had covered commissioners for affidavits. And so uh, I went to the 1969 Congress as a fully accredited, fully paid up member of the miscellaneous workers' union. So in a very direct sense, I owe my election as president of the September 1969 Congress to both the imagination of uh, Ray Geitzel and uh, his great support and the support which uh, his union gave to me. By the end of the 60s it was evident that the union was a very powerful influence in the Australian labour movement. It had influenced the election of the president of the ACTU and it was supplying much of the organisation in the campaign against the war in Vietnam. And its very ability to do these things so well meant that its opponents on the right redoubled their efforts. The great split in the Labor Party of the 50s had pitched faction against faction. The simmering battles exploded in the Missos in the 1971 and 1974 union elections. It was a union that wasn't afraid to use its influence. And uh, to that end, it sought it to ensure that the uh, progressive people were uh, in the leadership of the union and sought to assist progressive people in industrial and political areas. The Conservatives wanted to control it and the third great struggle for the union had begun. Four disgruntled organisers headed the campaign in the 1971 union elections. The fact that they wanted to run for office, that was their democratic right to do so, and any, anybody could do it. But I was concerned about the, the, the people who that they actually were the front for, and I felt that the election of those people, my candid opinion was, the election of those sort of people would have been a disaster for the union, and it would have probably destroyed everything that we'd struggled to get. From 1970 to the next election due in 1974, the leadership of one of the biggest unions in Australia was under constant attack. Those challenges were financed by outside forces uh, and there is documentary evidence of involvement of uh, the Labor Council of New South Wales leadership and uh, of the National Civic Council. Members of the union mobilised to defend their leaders. They fought hard. I worked at the university then and the teachers' college was a separate section and there was a big fence separating the two and at six o'clock in the morning I climbed over the fence and went into the teachers' college which at that time had 45 members and I could have been sacked because it was illegal, you know, and I wasn't supposed to be in them premises at all. And anyway, I took a chance on that and so I went in and had a meeting before they started work, the members, and you know, to vote to keep our leaders, and um, they all did. The opposition called themselves the Better Deal team. They door-knocked members and published pamphlets full of anti-communist rhetoric and accusations. Keith Blackwell, then secretary of the branch, bore the brunt of some less peaceful strategies. 
it got to the stage where we had to do something about the fat. It was ringing all hours of the night, ringing up, get him out, get that bastard out of bed, we're going to kill him. And of course Keith would never answer the phone. In the early hours of one morning, a bomb went off at the home of Arthur Geetzelt, Ray Geetzelt's brother. People who are engaged in that, those sort of uh, tactics uh, are just uh, uh, gangsters. Uh, it just didn't, uh, it was a matter of concern for my wife and kids, but it didn't, didn't worry me personally. Uh, there was no way they were going to get me to back off, or for, for that matter, any, any of my colleagues either. As it turned out, the hard work of the members and officials paid off. The 1974 union elections were won easily. Another result was the historic conviction of two members of the Better Deal team for stealing ballot papers. If the battle had been lost, the nature and direction of the union would have been very different. One can only assume that the deal that was done was to ensure that the strong militant attitude that the MWU had to wage and conditions negotiation would dissipate. In the meantime, the struggles for better wages and conditions against the resistance of employers had continued. In 1972, the Missos took up the Shorter Hours campaign. In the 70s, the Missos played some decisive roles in the politics of New South Wales. After Lionel Murphy had left for federal politics, Neville Rann came to represent the Missos in many important award campaigns. Later, he was assisted by the union in his attempts to become leader of the Labour Party. One of the great social changes has been women's rights. The struggle for equal pay was central to those rights, and the Missos joined the fight. I work as a man and I get paid as a woman. So I thought, well, I'll dress half as a man and half as a woman. All these things were handed to us on a platter plate. All these things had to be fought hard for meetings and demonstrations and, 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 and deputations and, you know, you didn't get a hand it to you. I mean, I had two children to feed and keep. And I came out on strike and I didn't, maybe didn't have the price of a loaf of bread. But we fought these conditions, you know, and, and uh, it worries me now that the young people don't realise what the older people had to go through to win these conditions. And when the strikes are on, they don't seem to be interested. By the beginning of the 80s, the union looked after over 400 awards and there were 110,000 missos nationally, 34,000 in New South Wales, with more joining every day. These achievements would have been impossible without the work of dedicated delegates and the rank and file of the union. The newly elected delegate on the job is a leader. We have trebled the number of delegates that we have in the field and they are continuing to grow big job educating them, big costs bringing them into delegates' classes, but investment in the future of the MWU, that's really what it is. Bob Hawke! In 1983, the man the Missos supported for ACTU president became Prime Minister of Australia and brought sweeping change. <laughs> 